Okay, so this presentation is the CCK that is not a CCK. Um, if you don't know what a CCK is, don't worry, I'll explain that as well. If you don't know what Joomla is, um, can't help you there. Um, so just for the benefit of the video, my name is Brian Tiemann. I'm the co-founder of Joomla, and I'm based in the UK. I am not a coder. I'm not a designer, although I have tried. Um, I'm not a leader. I've tried that as well. Um, and I'm not a follower of other people. Um, what I am is I'm really lucky because I get to travel the world talking about Joomla a lot. Um, and occasionally I might even mention my girlfriend. Um, so before we start, Joomla is awesome. It's the best thing ever. But sometimes we need more. We need to be able to do more on our websites than Joomla out of the box provides. So what's the problem with that? Well, we can do it a few different ways. One of the problems that we have, for example, is with the core components, this is com content, creating articles, you're really limited in what you can do. You can create text, you can add pictures, but that's about it. And some, now you can do tags as well. Woohoo. Um, but I really want to do a lot more to my articles. I want to customize them. I want to have extra fields. I want to do special images here. I want to have drop down lists. I want to make life easier for my content creators. I need more power than the regular component gives. I want to make sure that my content is uniform across the website. And by doing that, I've got, I might have a structure, a layout, or something, but that's too hard for my content creators to know about these special formatting options I want, so I just want them to fill in the data. So how, what can I do to, to, make, to solve my problem and to make it easier? Well, you could install Drupal, um, but just say no to that. Drupal is the one where CCKs are founded. Yeah, Drupal's famous for CCKs. A lot of people say Drupal is a CMS. Um, quite a lot of people, Drupal users as well, say Drupal is not a CMS. Drupal is a tool to build your own customized CMS. Now, I'm lazy. I like the easy life. I don't want to build a complete CMS. Joomla's there. It's great. I just want to give it a bit more power. So what can I do to give Joomla more power? Well, traditionally, what you do is you go to the Joomla extension directory. And right of this morning, there's 8,347 extensions there that will do everything, including tell you what the weather's like, even though you could just look outside the window. There are lots of what's called CCKs, Content Construction Kits. So what is that? What will it do? Well, this is quite a nice graphic. These are a load of different types of content you might have on your website. Magazine articles, corporate stuff, portfolios, blogs, glossaries, feature info, all sorts of different things. Each one of those requires a different layout. It, some of them require just text, some of them require text and pictures or videos, some of them you want to have some extra data, and you want it always to be consistent across your site. You don't want people to click from article to article and it, it change. Yeah, they like a consistent look and feel. So with extra fields, you can do that. You're making life easier. If I was doing a sports website, football website, I might want to have how many times that person has played, which clubs did they play at before, when was he born, what country are they from? And then a description of the person. Well, the description is easy. That's just regular text. But all those other items, to get them formatted nicely, to look good, it's going to be a pain to be consistent. But by adding extra fields to do that, it'll be easy. Now, traditionally, you would install a full CCK component. Um, these are four of the biggest ones, K2, Utheme, Seblod, and the Content Builder. They all have one problem in common. They all give you lots of extra functionality, but they don't add it to the regular Joomla article editor. They create, it's a new component, so you now end up with 
in your top menu in Joomla, you've got the content menu, and then you've got your components menu, and somewhere down at the bottom of components menu, you might have Zoom that you've installed. And you've now got to tell your users, I know you're creating articles, which is content, but don't use the content menu, use the Zoom or K2 or Sublot. And actually, you don't need to do that for all the articles. It's only for that one category on this website that I've got this special layout. So just for this one category, use that. And then it's even more fun because all four of those have their own unique user interface. All four of which look completely different to Joomla's content user interface. So if you're teaching somebody how to use Joomla, you've got to teach them how to use Joomla again in order to use that content interface. And if you're building multiple websites, it gets even more fun. If you're managing multiple websites, because one website might have K2, or one might have Zoo, or one might have Com Content. And every time you've got to learn how to do it, which is the right thing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of these. They're all good at what they do. Seblod in particular is good at actually building almost complete applications. K2 is great for sort of a blogging platform type stuff. Uh, Zoo is also really good for categories and extra fields. They're all good, but they all have a learning curve. They've got a design curve. And as well as all of that, you end up with your two editors. You've got your com content and you've got your com zoo, whatever. You also need more modules because all the core modules that extract data from articles are looking at the com content table and now you need to look at the com k2 table or the com. So you need an extra set of modules on your site and not just extra sets of modules, extra set of plugins and everything else. So you're duplicating stuff all the time and making more work for yourself. And I like the easy life. If I can build a website in a day, why should I take five? I don't want to make life hard. From a business perspective, obviously, the quicker I can do it, the quicker I can move on to the next project and the next client. The solution is to use plugins. Plugins are incredibly powerful. Plugins are small bits of code that you can use to inject extra stuff where you want. Now, I could stand here and tell you how to write content plugins to give extra fields, but I'm not going to because I don't like developing. I can't develop, and it's boring. Why should I do it the hard way? What I want to do is extend com content to add the extra fields. Just one editor. Let, no need for the extra modules. Again, taking the easy option. So I say you can do it yourself. You can write your own plugins. It's actually not that hard if you know how to write code. But if you're like me and you haven't got a clue how to really write code, you don't want to do that. I use this. This is a component and, and plugins called Fields Attach. Now, I am not suggesting that this is the only way. I'm not even maybe even suggesting it's the best way. or that this. I'm just showing it as an example of how you can achieve this. As you can see, it's available for Joomla 2.5 and Joomla 3. I'm going to build a brand new website to celebrate Germany winning the World Cup. I had to do that. Unfortunately, Thomas isn't here. That slide was especially for Thomas. Um, so this is a typical sort of thing I'm going to have on, the, on, on this website. I'm going to have a whole category about match reports. Right now, as you can see, I've just got title, photo, text. And again, I'm going to have a category all about the players. Again, I've just got his name, his photo, and a description of him. And that's it. I want more information. I want on the match report to say what the score was. I want to say how many people were at, watched the game. I want to say who got a yellow card, who got a red card. Yeah, I want to see, show who scored the goals, who, what was the name of the referee, all sorts of geeky stuff that sports fans like to see. 
They like to see those sort of statistics. But I don't want to see that extra stuff on the player biography. On the player biography, I want a different set of extra fields. How many times has he played for Germany? How many times has he won? Which city was, a, was he born in? Which club does he play for? What's his inside leg measurement? What's his girlfriend look like? I don't know. All sorts of different things. But it's a different set of extra information compared to the ones on the match. And I might also have a third type of content on this website, which is just regular articles. doesn't need anything else. You know, it's a, I'm quite happy with con content, just text and a picture, it's fine. So how do I do this? Well, Fields Attach is plugins for content. That's really all it is. It's a collection of plugins with a component to set it up. So you'll use the component once, probably, when you're building your site. How do you do it? Well, the first thing you have to do is create a group. So I'm creating a group called Matches. For that group, you then assign it to a category. So I'm going to assign it to the category matches. Pretty obvious. Uh, but you could assign it to multiple categories. You can also make it recursive. So if you've got subcategories to automatically flow into the subcategories or not, you can even select it to single articles if you wanted to as well. I think that's probably a bit customization too far, but you can do that if you want. Once you've created the category, <coughs> excuse me. Once you've created the category, you go on to create the fields. Again, it's really simple. Give the field a title. Are we going to show the title? Is it visible or not? I'm not quite sure why you would have one that's not visible, but there's an option where you want this field to be displayed by default all the fields will be displayed either at the top of the article or at the bottom of the article you can customize it manually by injecting it into a template override but if you don't fancy that just say whether it's going to go before or afterwards which group this is part of which language it's in published whether it's search whether it's a searchable field that's quite important, might be quite important. Is it a required field so that someone, your content editor can't save the article until they put the score in? And what type of field it is? And there's lots of different types of fields, and I'll go into that in a second. So as you can see, I've created four fields. For the result, the attendance, the man of the match, and red cards. So when I've done my groups and my fields, Oh, this is the type of fields that we have. Now, it's a little bit hard to see on that. Uh, fields attach itself, two versions like a lot of things, a free one and a paid version. Uh, the free version includes input fields, text area fields, select boxes, images, gallery, ima uh, gallery images, and files. The other extra fields are part of the commercial add-on. I think, if memory serves me right, it's eight euros for the extra fields. So, not a lot. When you've done that, when I now go into my article, if it is in the category, in this case, matches, there's an extra tab appears. And inside that tab, my fields. As simple as that. And there you can see the output on the front. Uh, in the database, I'll can open it up. I'll open it up in a second at the end. Okay. Incredibly simple. Uh, that I did that just before. Took me about five minutes to do that first version. Now. If I go to a completely different category that is of content that's not matches, there's no extra tab there. So you don't have to, have to always have these extra tabs on your thing saying new stuff, new stuff, new, you know, and you have to click in it to see if there's any extra fields for this category. It only shows the tab if there are extra fields. 
That's it. We're good. How easy was that? Done. That really is all there is to it. Create the field, put it in a group, assign the group to a category, create your content in the category, job's done. And the great bit, as I say, it's using com content, the same interface. So the training involved, almost zero. The difference between switching from a site using extra fields and a site not using extra fields, not noticeable. Makes life really, really easy. Now, is this a solution for really complex layouts? Probably not. You might want to use one of the proper CCKs. But I would suggest that for most people, you only want extra fields occasionally on parts of your website. And when you do want them, you want it quick and easy. And why have the extra thing? I've done this on sites. I've used the video field. I've used the, um, there's an image gallery field. You just upload the images and tell it, tell it in the select box which folder to use, and it automatically creates a gallery. Um, imagine if you're doing a car website. You know, you're going to want to have lots of different fields. You might want to have the engine capacity, the performance, the price, a photo gallery, maybe even a video of the car driving around on a test circuit, and then a nice big description. But the rest of the website is just regular content. You know, you don't need anything special. You can do that really easily with this. So I'm going to answer Angie's question and just nip into my database. Those are the fields that separate table. There's a category to define the fields, cat, uh, category for the group, uh, a table for the groups, if there's any images in there, and those are the, the values. So it's just a, it's an extra table. Does that answer your question? OK. But all the rest of your content is. The main co your main content is still in exactly the same place, exactly where you would expect it to be, exactly where other modules are going to look for it to do your latest news or most popular or whatever. Yeah. Um, I assume that it's also possible with the front end editor. Yes. Yes. I personally, I'll be honest and say, I am not a fan of front end editing at all. Um, I don't think it's a particularly good thing to do that you do but that's my personal preference um, but yes um, when you have images do you have to enter the part or is there an upload functionality should we do it yeah. which actually means I don't remember oops New field, image, type, image. Oh, yes, in the upload option, in the option, each field have extra options. In this one, you can see, you can select it to automatically even resize the images as well. So, again, that might you might be interested in that if you've got, was it you that asked me yesterday? About forcing users, no, about forcing users to do it. Oh, you're using it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you want to really format the fields individually, so but you can do it as a as a template override just by using the ID of the field as well. There's a really e simple tutorial on the on his website uh, for how to do that. All right, oh, great, because I, I, I never know how good people's support is, because usually when I submit something, they might see my name and you know, think, um, 
Have you used the search? No, he's got his own search component. Uh, oh, I've not installed it. He's got his own search component, which lets you do more advanced searches um, based on the data in the fields as well. So, you, so if you're doing your car website, you could search for based, you know, a car that is five doors, if that was a select, an engine size of a certain stuff and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know um, if I would like to show this extra content on the website in the table. Is it possible? You could do whatever you want uh, because you can do the over, a manual override for each yeah, bit. Okay. So by default, the easy option is says put it at the top of the content or the bottom. Um, but for the override, you just go into in the same way you would create an over, normal override, and it's it's something like squiggle bracket field ID one, and then you can format it however you want. So it's got the power there if you want if you want to customize it, and it's also just got the quick and easy method um, as well. Yes, Peter. Yes. The label of the field in the interface, for one thing. Yeah. In my in my interface, I've written the word image. You know, I've created a field called image. So in my in my admin, the field is called image. If you want it, whatever the word is in Dutch. Yeah, you would do it that way. You could also, I suppose, theoretically, not have some fields in some languages. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of strange, but um, that's how. It's, there's also quite a nice option for importing and exporting fields. So if you've built lots of complex fields and you've got it all formatted how you want on one website, you can just export them and then import them on a new website, so you don't have to do the job all over again. Again, you see, you notice the theme in this. Making my life easier. Yeah. Um, if you were to, the other thing to point out is, if you were to write to actually write plugins yourself to do this, it's actually fairly simple to write a plugin to add an an extra field. But it's trickier to do the adding the extra field based on the categories and to have multiple groups on them. That's another. It's a, It's a. It's still possible, but it's just an extra level of work to do. Yes, Peter. Let's have a look. Don't know. Not something that I've looked at, so it's a good question, though. Of course, if you've got caching turned on, it's not going to matter, I suppose, but debug system, save and close. Good idea. Not you know, and with cash with caching, you know, you it's, you, you wouldn't um, see anything because it would get cached. Yeah, about fifteen actually. But, yeah, that's what it's showing. But unless I've that says thirty one. I don't know. Maybe we'll have a look actually at the at the queries later. Um, didn't say any difference in speed, so. Yeah, I'm, as I said, I'm not saying in any way that this is the best piece of best piece of code. I'm not in a position to judge that. I'm just saying it's an easy piece of code to use. 
it does what I want to use. Yeah. It's actually quite funny you say that because yesterday I joined a conversation that Angie was having with Michael um, and Matthew about this great idea for adding extra fields to the core. And then I joined it and said, oh, well, I'm doing a presentation tomorrow, which kind of shows it. So I don't know. Maybe you could, you know, I think this is a, this is a, as a principle, as a concept, a good way to add extra fields into the core. Um, I guess it would need somebody to actually write, write it and submit it. There you are. There's a challenge for you. Okay. There we are. So, you know, as I say, whether this code is the best way of doing it, I don't know. Yeah, it might be perfect. I don't know. But as a concept, you know, we've already, Joomla already got all the fields defined anyway, so um, it shouldn't be that difficult uh, to do. And it's not going to replace the full, K, the, the full CCKs that exist because they have a bigger purpose. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions? So that's the problem when you demonstrate something that's so simple. It doesn't take you very long. So if there's nothing else, is it coffee time? <laughs> or if you've got questions about anything else at all, hopefully related to Joomla, um, I'm happy to answer those as well. If not, that's fine. No? Nope. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think users are, you know, my experience with it has been that users, don't, I don't even need to teach them anything. I've, I've shown them how to use, to create an article before. They've asked for the X extra feature, I've added this, and they just know how to do it. Just, it's obvious it's the same as everything else. Right, thanks very much. Sorry it was short, but it's hopefully useful.